Boom! What's up everybody? Welcome back to Mount MoGraph. As always, my name's Matt, and in today's video we're going to be making these kind of endless fractals inside of After Effects. It's really, really easy and actually a lot more fun than you expect. Really, it comes in two parts, making the fractal, animating the fractal, and then some kind of cool coloring stuff um, that we'll take care of near the end. So you can make these loops that kind of go on forever and ever, um, and like I said, it's pretty easy. I got one more example here, and we'll jump into actually creating it in After Effects. Um, and maybe play around with uh, some different coloring techniques that I think are a lot of fun. So we'll play this, and as you can see, you know, I did like a little three uh, three dimensional thing with some depth of field for this one. Um, but again, these fractals look like I'm some pro animator. I'm really not. This is super easy effect. So all you need to do to create these fractals is grab a free plugin to start. Uh, it comes in this package from Amino.com. Um, it's like a free plugins uh, that you might have heard of Amino Snake. It's like this plugin from a while back it used to be kind of popular, um, kind of fell off, but uh, yeah, so it comes with this other tool called Amino Kaleidoscope. So you just go download these things. If you're on Mac, you got to do this little sneaky CS6 folder and you'll still get the plugins and then you can copy and paste them into your regular plugin. Restart After Effects and you're good to go. So once you have your plugins, your Amino plugins um, in After Effects, we can jump into creating these kaleidoscope effects. So I'm going to create a new composition here. Um, we're going to go, I guess, 10 seconds. Uh, you can make these longer, but one of the things that is definitely going to happen is your preview time is going to get pretty dang slow. So we'll try to keep it frat fast by using proxies and uh, being kind of smart. So we have a composition here, 1920 by 1080. We need some element here to start what we're going to do. So what I found actually works great is just grabbing some kind of like random screenshot. It doesn't matter what it actually is, um, but you want like some colors, some kind of interesting contrast. Um, yeah, and you'll kind of see what it does. This is just like our base element just to get some color and uh, different shapes. So I'm going to grab a weird screenshot just right here. Uh, we will clip click here and just import this into my composition. Nothing too fancy, and I promise this is going to look pretty cool. So scale it up a little bit, and we're going to center it up center it up in our composition, create a new adjustment layer. So I'm going to use the Video Copilot Effects Console right here. Um, I just have a shortcut to pop it up so I can quickly add effects. And that's what I've really started to use for pretty much any effects I need to add. It's so much quicker. So I'll add a link to that below. That's from the awesome Andrew Kramer over at Video Copilot. Um, He's got this effects console, which is a free tool. So using our free tool, we're going to add another free tool called Amino Kaleidoscope. For the longest time, I read Amino as Omnio or something like that. Um, kind of messed that up. So this is a great kaleidoscope effect. I really like it. Um, it's a lot of fun, and it's really great for creating like these endless fractals. So what I'm going to do is start with something like a triangle, and we're basically just going to turn up our mirror radius um, until we basically fill up our entire screen um, with some kind of weird design like this. I'm going to set a keyframe on our mirror radius. We're going to come back to the in a second, and I'm going to press U on my keyboard just to pop up the keyframe. So what I'm going to do is duplicate this amino kaleidoscope effect we just did, and I'm actually going to sw switch the mirror shape here um, to something like a septagon. And this, uh, like making these kind of fractal things, it all comes down to what looks good to you. So there's no like right or wrong way. You just want to go through and play around with your mirror radiuses and also the different mirror shapes. Maybe I'll try the pentagon here. And we're just going to keep stacking it until we start to get a kind of interesting design. So I'm going to actually maybe try to start really small. Um, and once we have kind of a cool looking geometric layout, this is going to be as, I guess that's fine. We're going to duplicate this effect one more time. I think we're going to go up maybe four different of these effects um, just stacked on top of each other. And that's going to help make these kind of uh, fractals that look way more interesting than just using the effect once. So you got to play around to try to find something that um, works for the kind of style you want to go for. Maybe I'll try the pentagon again or the hexagon or something. Maybe turn this value down and this might actually work better. Again, you just want to have it look as interesting as possible with as many like different geometric looking shapes going on. Duplicate this one more time. We're going to go back to our right triangle, I guess, and just try to crank up these values. So there we go. We're starting to get this sweet geometric pattern that looks way, way better. And I'm really happy with the kind of our base level. So I'm going to press U on the keyboard and we're going to see all four different keyframes for our mirror radiuses. And all we have to do is go forward in time and do a really simple linear animation um, for these different values. So what I like to do, um, basically go the opposite direction. If you have high values, go low. And if you have low values, go high. If you have somewhere in the middle, um, I don't know what you do. You're going to have to fish your wish. Um, but basically, you just want to play around with these values and do your best to wind up with something that doesn't have an alpha channel. 
click this so, like so you can't see through you want like a solid layer there's some tricks we can do to kind of fix that at the end that i hope we can get into um, but yeah you want to be really really simple to start and we're going to degrade this footage to the point we won't even be able to read it and uh, we're just going to use like the colors and shapes uh, like i said so we have one keyframe here i'm going to go to my second amino kaleidoscope and we're going to start turning maybe this value looks better going up so if we turn it up it's not doing much so maybe this value needs to go down like i said i wish there was a better uh steps to take it's all going to be just playing around depending on what screenshot you used um but yeah you can probably see where this is going and this is honestly one of my very favorite um ways to waste a render i'm um, just making these fractals they they're just so fun to look at it's really interesting how uh, shapes and patterns can work together so once you have kind of a starting and an ending point uh, for this composition just like this you want to do some spot checking just by clicking through and you want to see a uh, kind of what your animation is actually doing you don't need to watch every frame that's going to be kind of sucky to watch as a preview and that's why we're going to use proxies but you just want to make sure that i said like i said you don't get too many of these alpha channels and you can always toggle your transparency grid to make sure you're not getting those so just do a little bit more spot checking and this one actually miraculously worked out great and I have a pretty decent kind of fractal design. You can crank these values more. You can make them go fit faster over like five seconds. Um, I actually, on Instagram, I threw up a little video that was like, I think almost a minute of fractals. And that one's just like cool to watch, um, but wasn't great on render time. So anyway, once we have kind of our base fractal, um, like I said, it kind of is two parts to this video. We're going to make our animation and then we're going to go and color it and kind of take it to another level. So I like to work with proxies quite a bit. I'm going to grab this comp one here and just make a proxy movie and we're just going to render it. So fair warning, this could take like eight minutes. So I'm going to speed up this footage and I'll be back as soon as it is previewed. Okay, and we're back. We got a proxy created. I should have said um, you can press caps lock before you run the render and then you don't have to like preview it here and also have it rendered up there. Um, and you can save a lot of computer resources, but because I was going to speed it up, I didn't press caps lock just so we could like watch it play real quick. Um, but anyway, so once you have your proxy, drop your proxy comp into a new composition here. I've got comp two, and then you can get live playback for these fractals. Uh, this is a pretty basic one. It's actually like the other ones I did were moved like a lot faster as you probably saw in the beginning. Um, but as you can see, when we play this, we're getting kind of these like endless cool fractals just because we used all of those stacked shapes. So I'm going to turn off this proxy here and I just want to show you one other cool technique. If you do wind up having something that doesn't show a lot of alpha channels, you can sometimes just duplicate the adjustment layer and just give a second for it to preview and you can wind up with something like even more complex but the same thing so if you stack it again um, and this only works because we had all these keyframes um, that were already lined up um, and didn't show alpha channels so when you stack them as adjustment layers and not just on the layer you might get these black uh, or not black spots but like these uh kind of solid uh portions of the animation, but you'll also wind up with a lot of uh, different complexity sections um, that are kind of cool to see. And three adjustment layers of all those effects might not have been the right choice, um, but fair warning, that's going to take a little bit more time to render, so that's why I didn't do it. Um, but it's also still a fun technique. So I'm going to turn back on this comp here, make sure I get this proxy enabled red alert, and I'm going to go back to comp two so I can scrub this in real time. And we can actually play around with making this look a little bit better and not just like some weird screenshot, which is totally what it is. So I'm going to create adjustment layer here. I'm going to grab a curves effect using the effects console just by quickly typing it up. And what I want to do is just maximize the contrast so we can do more with these colors, like uh, just slightly tweak the blacks, slightly tweak the whites, and we're going to be good here. I'm going to do another adjustment layer. And what we're going to do here is grab a CC toner. Um, I like to do this just to get some really crazy colors. I'm going to go with the pen tone just because we have a couple different colors in this whole animation. And actually what I like to do is almost invert the highlights and the shadows. I feel like you'd normally wind up with some kind of cool effects. So I'm going to go with a red um, for the highlights, which I guess are going to be the darker portions. I'm going to go with like kind of a deep blue. Uh, for the brights, I'll also set it to like a darker blue or maybe somewhere in between. Not really even paying attention to this portion. I just want to find some colors that I think um, add some more visual contrast. Um, and we want to wind up with something that looks weird. Um, we're making these abstract fractals that are kind of endless. So we just want really punchy colors and we're going to mess around with them more. So I like what's happened with this adjustment layer. If I turn it on and off, you can see we took like a screenshot and we're already starting to lose some of the 
legibility of these different texts, um, which is great because that's what we want to do. So uh, once you have some colors you like, actually another little tip is if you hold shift and press the plus or minus uh, buttons, you can actually toggle through your multiply modes or your modes, I should say. And if you find a color scheme you like, I always find that it's good to kind of see how that same color scheme could affect your scene um, just by switching to a different mode. Um, maybe it could be something subtle. Maybe it could be something more aggressive like this linear light. Um, where again, just trying to kill off whatever screenshot elements make it like you can read comp one. And we just want to get these punchy colors. Um, you know, I might even stick with this bright red. You can always duplicate this adjustment layer again and toggle through your modes. Um, again, maybe I want to go with this kind of, uh, you know, Knight Rider look or whatever it is. And that's actually looking kind of cool. I, I kind of dig how it um, reminds me of this old game called like Tank Hunter or something like that. I don't know if anyone knows that. But yeah, that, that style is kind of interesting. Um, actually, I'll go with this red. Yeah, maybe I don't want that. I don't know. Um, it's again, this whole, <laughs> I wish this uh, tutorial had a little bit better direction, but it's all like what ends up looking good um, or what do you want, what you want to go with. So I'm going to stick with this subtraction. And for the second comp, I'm actually going to create a new proxy. But one thing that's going to be different here is in your render settings, you want to go to your proxy use and say, use all proxies. So we don't have to render our base scene. And we're also going to take that same like comp one movie file and degrade it or not degrade it, but basically re-render over that into comp two. So we're we're gonna get even more of these little like uh, dancing kind of dissolve look um, and we're gonna run a render and it's gonna be way way quicker uh, just like this and we're gonna be able to preview it so as this is kind of playing I might even be able to talk hopefully it's gonna render really quick um, but as you can see here um, just in this quick preview we're starting to get some cool fractal looks our multiply modes kind of affecting our colors and as elements come up the colors are kind of changing and we're gonna be able to use that for glows and a color uh, a couple other um, different colors to make this look like a much more vibrant scene with a lot more going on instead of just this fractal that's moving apart. Um, I think it's really important to have some cool colors um, involved in your render as well. I feel like that always makes things just look more poppy and interesting and just toggling through your modes you can get a lot of cool effects. So uh, just one uh, couple more seconds here. We're going to have our proxy in comp 2. We're going to take our comp 2, drop it into another comp, play around with some more adjustments layers, and then I'll show you the depth of field thing with the camera. And we're going to be uh, good for creating After Effects fractals. Um, and I hope you like this video so far. Uh, let me know in the comments or whatever. I'm just trying to kill time, to be honest. <laughs> so we've got a comp 2 uh, proxy already. Drop it into another composition just so we can preview this back in real time. And you're going to see this looks almost nothing like what we started with. We almost have this little flashing thing. If we zoom in here, these lines get like thicker and thinner um, just because we're using like different footage. We have this little vibrate thing. There's sections where when colors overlap, they get a little bit funky. I'll zoom in here so you can really see. Um, just for this portion, you're going to see this green turns to blue a little bit. There's these white flashes. There's this pixelation. It's just starting to visually look like there's more going on. And uh, we're going to keep playing with it. So I'm going to grab an adjustment layer and we're just going to throw a glow on there to start. I want to see where we're at. We might not keep this on here yet. Uh, I might want to keep playing with the colors. But yeah, you can see what glow is going to do for us um, in just a little bit. So I'll delete this and we're going to throw a CC toner on here one more time, uh, as ridiculous as that sounds. And this time we're going to stick with a tritone. And uh, I think I want to just have something um, a little bit bluer, maybe might be cool as I go for red. Um, but maybe if we go with like this dark blue kind of look, maybe we'll go with a kind of vanilla beige mid-tones. And then for our highlights, maybe we want to do something. Um, let's see. I'm trying to find something quick. We'll go with something with something green. And just as we preview this, you know, actually, that that's a lie. I'm going to make my shadows black. Just that's better contrast. You know, maybe this isn't the best fractal, but like I said, there's tons of techniques you can do about stacking more of the amino kaleidoscopes to make it more visually interesting. I'm pretty happy with this. Um, and so I'm going to put this comp three. I'm going to create a proxy movie, switch my best settings to use all proxies just so we don't have to re-render over two different layers of video. And we'll get a real quick preview and kind of plan out what effects we're going to throw on here next. It's definitely going to be the glow. Um... Yeah, and maybe it would have been nice if I had actually gone with the pen tone instead of the tritone for the CC toner. Uh, maybe more to have some more color variation, but oh well. Uh, we're going to drop it onto comp 3. I'm going to go and change this to 16 bits for a channel for my color depth. And sometimes this works, sometimes it doesn't, but create an adjustment layer, drop a glow on here. And what we're going to try to do is 
find like the least amount uh, threshold that we can do to get the most benefit of the glow. And like I said, you have these jittery lines, you have colors changing, so the glow is gonna pick up on that um, as it plays. And maybe I'm gonna crank up this glow so it's just kind of punchy. So I'm gonna zoom out here and we have this like very 90s look. Um, and what's great about this glow is it kind of hides our um, text even more. Maybe if I crank this up more, we have these cool kind of glowy dots. Do you see how we have this like vibration glow? Um, and yeah, maybe this is a great look. Maybe it's not. I'm really not sold on it. I think that glow is kind of intense. I might actually turn it down a little bit. See how low we can go. Um, well, whatever. You can read comp one, but we'll pretend it's perfect. And we have this nice kind of shaky thing going on. It looks pretty cool. Um, it looks pretty complex. And we're at a great part. So the last thing we're going to do is do uh, shift command C. We're going to pre-compose this layer uh, just into a new composition. And what I'm going to do is make this into a 3D layer. Go to my rotation by pressing R on my keyboard. And we're going to do um, just a little bit of stuff with the camera. So maybe tilt this like 30 degrees or something. Go and create a camera layer. We're going to throw it on here. Hold command, toggle down into all of your camera properties. And we're going to grab the depth of field, toggle this guy on. And what I like to do is just turn up this aperture to an absolutely ridiculous level, uh, just so I can tell where my focus distance w needs to be or wants to be. It's a lot easier when you have like the super blur uh, kind of bothering you. So I want to obviously focus in on like the very center here. So once it's looking pretty good, I can go and change my aperture to something more reasonable. Nah, maybe not like 1300, maybe like 200 or something. And you want to, I mean, I personally like that kind of heavy depth of field or very shallow focus. So I'm going to turn it up to something like that. Switch the iris shape to anything but fast, tra uh, fast rectangle because that always looks terrible. I'll go with the hexagon. And yeah, we're looking good. That just smooths things out really quick. I'm going to go into my focus distance here and I'm just going to zoom in. Oh, not my focus distance. Sorry, my, um, my zoom level. We're just going to zoom in here till my comp fills up more of the screen. Um, you can always play with your rotation a little bit more uh, for the actual layers so it like fills up the comp better. Um, but then you don't have as much of a depth of field. So it's kind of a trade-off. I'm just going to zoom in here on the with the zoom property. Pretend that's perfect. I'll drop comp 4 into a new composition. Press command uh, K on my keyboard and I'm going to switch the height and width to 1080. Uh, just so we have this nice square and maybe I'll scale it up and uh, just kind of fake put it perfectly in the middle. Pretend I did this awesome. So if I go into comp five now, I'm gonna do a quick proxy. Again, switch my best settings to use all proxies, press okay, and we'll hopefully run a pretty quick render. Okay, and we're back. We can finally preview our video in all of its glory. I'll go and press preview here, and you're gonna see we have that nice kind of jittery flash from the degraded proxies. We have these weird jittery lines. We have a glow. We would have more color if I didn't mess up the CC toner. Um, but in a nutshell, this is how you can create kind of these cool fractal effects in After Effects, uh, just like we saw at the beginning. Um, you know, you can get something like this really easy. I know in this uh, project, I did that double stack of adjustment layers with Amino Kaleidoscope. Um, and that worked out great. And again, I kind of didn't use the best color palette here. And then I think for that first video, um, I went really overboard with color, but you can kind of see how those different modes uh, just kind of push things. And what you notice as this one plays is you'll see the colors change for different elements. And I think that's just a nice like kind of layer of effect uh, for this kaleidoscope thing. And, you know, as you can see, I used a screenshot here as well. Once you know, you really know. Uh, but anyway, if I can find these project files, I'll put them up on mtmo.co slash free along with the other project files or the other free tool called Focus. And yeah, hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks so much for watching as always. And I'll catch you later. Peace.